baby, I wanna ride it, baby. I wanna ride it, baby. I wanna ride it. I wanna ride. I wanna ride. Welcome back to the Jocelyn's Cabaret Texas After Show, only on Damien After Dark. I'm your host, Damien Gentry, and I am so thrilled and honored to have you joining me today, okay? Thank you, guys. If you love Jocelyn's Cabaret like I do, baby, you've come to the right place where we talk baddies, Jocelyn's Cabaret, Bad Boys Club, Trashy Reality TV, and so much more. You don't want to miss it. So before we begin, click that subscribe button right down there. By clicking my name, you'll see the Damien After Dark tab right down there click subscribe so you never miss an episode okay also there's a thumbs up button down there you also see if you don't do anything else please like that video you can leave right now just click that like button on the way out okay i got a little energy tonight can y'all tell um no i ain't done no cocaine. hey jocelyn <laughs> Get in the comment section. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on episode 13 of Jocelyn's Cabaret. We are nearing the end of the season. So, um, I don't think that Jocelyn's Cabaret has ever gotten 20 episodes like Baddies has got. So, I think we're closer to the end of the season. But who knows? They may shock us and give us 20 episodes. You feel me? So, get in the comment section. Leave me your thoughts and opinions on episode 13. And listen, if you want to donate to your boy... In the description box below will be some ways that you can donate. And please be mindful that when you leave a super chat, YouTube will take half of the money. Okay? Thank you guys so much for the love, the support, the donations. I really, like, I was thinking today, I was driving down the road thinking about it. And I really, truly appreciate y'all. Like, I really do. I was thinking that. I'm like, I really, like, I don't have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, right? We're pushing towards 10K. That's what I'm really wanting to get to um but i'm like wow the amount of people that i do got that's a lot of people to me like that's more than i could ever imagine like i'm so thankful i'm so grateful and i'm so blessed for each and every one of y'all that watch my videos like i can't i want to say thank you in case i don't say thank you enough even though i probably do but I feel like I'm always saying thank you, but I just want to keep saying it because I'm so grateful for y'all. Y'all, I'm like, y'all want to hear what I have to say? Really? Okay. Well, shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's very heartwarming, okay? So, thank you. Thank you. And I love you very, very much if you're watching this video right now and you've made it two minutes and 53 seconds in. I love you. Now, let's get into this episode, all right, honey? Who else, who else keeps Domolo stuck in their head? My sister-in-law was at my house the other day, and I was singing Domolo, and she was like, she's like, my eight-year-old daughter sings that all the time. I'm like, oh my God, what does she know about Domolo? Why is the eight-year-old singing Domolo, Tracy? Why is the eight-year-old singing Domolo? Domolo poquito, Domolo punquero, mi si no pinicho, oki no quineto, Domolo poquito. I don't know what it is about Jocelyn. She puts crack in her music or something. Like, it's like, I don't know what it is. Now, this episode begins, we know last week ended with Erica versus Ocean. Erica and Ocean, since the beginning, have somewhat bonded they kind of were in this little alliance of the new girls together and erica felt like ocean threw her under the bus let's not say erica felt like it she did ocean threw her ally erica right under the bus when jocelyn asked ocean who do you think is the weakest link when it comes to dancing who do you think should pretty much go home erica throws ocean out there and and uh, or ocean throws erica out there and erica was pissed okay um, both of them are pulling each other's hair. They're fighting. They're pulling each other's hair. But at the same time, they're getting licks in. We see Erica punching Ocean's head. We see Ocean punching Erica's head. And baby, y'all know we don't like swamp water over here. Y'all know we don't like puddle of piss over here. But one thing we can't deny is she clocked Erica in the face a couple good times. Like, she got Erica a few times. And I was shocked because... We saw what Erica did to Jigsaw earlier in the season. Y'all remember Kay, Jigsaw? But I even said back then, I said the only reason I think Erica beat Jigsaw down the way she did was because Jigsaw just can't fight at all. Erica met somebody that can fight to her level, which is Ocean. Do I think Ocean's a great fighter? No, but I think her and Erica are on somewhat the same level when it comes to fighting, right? 
Now, did y'all peep? Did y'all peep how Piss Water said, This is my real fucking hair, yo. I guess Erica pulled her hair. This is my real fucking hair. And what the fuck does that got to do with anything, ho? You think because your hair is real that it can't get pulled? The fuck they do that at? Like, what? What? It, I, it made me look at you sideways, Ocean. Like, what? What? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What did you really mean by that, Miss Pisswater? I'm just curious. What did you what did you really mean by that when you said this is my real fucking hair, yo? You can't pull this. This is my real And You lucky she didn't scalp you. Now they fight again, round two. Again, I'm shocked because Ocean looked like she knocked Erica clean in the face. Now Erica's face was still given, you know, beauty, right? Erica's a pretty girl. And I was expecting to see a black eye. I was expecting to see a busted lip. Um, but the optics of it, the from what I saw, it looked like Ocean got the best of Erica. What do y'all think? Who do you think won that fight between Oceans and Erica? I want to hear you guys' thoughts and opinion on that. It's the battle of the light skins, bitch. Okay? It's battle of the fluorescence. All right? Battle of the clap on, clap off. Y'all remember that back in the day when you when they had those as seen on TV? You buy that light at home or you clap, clap on, clap off. It's Battle of the Light Skins. Uh, clap on, clap off. Now, Envy, um, which I got to be careful when I say Envy, because er the Envy Erica calls herself Envy Erica, but there's also the BBW Envy, the, the, the fuller figure girl. She, you know, she's always holding Ocean accountable, and that's what I appreciate about her, because Erica and Ocean have also been somewhat, I mean, Erica and Envy have also been somewhat close as well in this little newbies alliance and um envy tells air uh tells ocean that um that she provoked it she says you provoked it when you stood up and walked towards erica and you got in her space and she did if you rewatch last week ocean stood up and walks toward erica and that's when erica jumped up and said oh bitch you want to stand you know that's when it escalated um now, Erica tells, or Ocean tells Erica that she's botched and had too much surgery. And I'm just like, oh, wow. So, this is how you really felt about your little friend the whole time, Ocean. I really think you're hating because nothing on Erica looks botched to me. I'm sorry. And I think you're mad. I think you're mad, Ocean. And I think you're hating because Erica's got every, when it comes to two light skins, when it when it come to two y'all two light skins, I feel like any man gonna pick Erica off rip. If you put Erica and Ocean side by side at the cabaret, and you got a man to come in and he want to spin, you got a high roller, you got a you got a big spender, right? He want to drop that motherfucking black card. He want to drop a stack of cash. Who you think he gonna choose first, Oceans or Erica? Hello, Erica, right? So for you to say that she's botched and, you know, she's had too much. Girl, you're you're pressed and you're mad that you don't have that, that you don't look like her. You're mad. You're mad. Oceans, you're mad. And I'm like, like, we're not going to go there. We are not going to go there, Miss Pisswater. Because looks department, like, come on. Jocelyn tells the girls that Rose, Hennessy, and Neek are in her top three right now to get the $50,000. She says her mind can change at any point. So don't none of you girls get a big head and think that you, you know, Big Mama Don, because I will easily choose somebody else, which I thought her her choices were interesting, but I agree with them because Neek is a great dancer. Neek is very pretty. Hennessy and Rose, both beautiful girls. You know, I like I'm 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 with those three as far as not who you like the best, not who is your favorite personality, but who is the best dancer, who has the best look, who is gonna sell the sex, who is gonna sell the cabaret fantasy experience. That is Neek, that's Ocean and Hennessy. I can see that. I can see that. 
Now, Jocelyn says that those three have been dancing the hardest, fighting the hardest, and standing their ground the hardest. Do you agree with Jocelyn's three top three choices? And if you don't agree, who is your top three? I would like to hear who y'all's who who y'all's top three is. Um, now, last week, some people had issues. Well, I, I just wanted to clear this up. <laughs> some people had issues with me saying that Danny looked very masculine and manly. I'm still standing by that. I'm not changing what I said. Some some of y'all were saying. Um, that I said she was unattractive. I never said that Danny was an ugly girl or that she was unattractive that I can recall. Because what I do remember is when I was watching the cabaret, there was a confessional that Danny had. And I remember as me and my mom were watching it, I was like, Danny looks really pretty right there. Like, why can't she? And you don't, she doesn't have to doll herself up. You don't have to put the makeup and the wigs on to be pretty, even though she looked her best that way. It's just when you're in the cabaret, a strip club, you're selling sex. Or does, does somebody really want a bodybuilder type figure? Because that's what Danny's body gives. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's lots of women who are in bodybuilding competitions. There are lots of women who go to the gym every day and want to be toned and want to be ripped and want to be, you know, this and that. Do your thing. I'm just like, for the cabaret though. And here's the thing. Ricardo clocked it too. Ricardo clocked it too. Did y'all notice? Ricardo called the girls out. Now, he didn't call Danny out. He didn't say Danny's name in, in specifically, but that's who he was referring to because he probably didn't want to hurt her feelings. But he calls the girls out and he was like, Look, some of y'all are walking very. He didn't say manly or masculine. He said the N word. He said, Some of y'all are walking like ninjas. Okay. Ricardo says that a lot of the girls are walking around, not a lot, he says some of the girls are walking around on stage like men. He wants them to walk very feminine, very graceful, very, you know, stripper-esque. He didn't want to single out Danny, but let's be real. Danny, he was talking to, um... I feel like he was talking to um, uh, Envy as well. Because Envy got a little uh, in her. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Envy's the, BB, the BBW. Um, Andrea probably got a little uh, 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 in her. You know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, and like shit. It's like I said, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm up here. I'm up here. Sitting up here as a man who has a lot of feminine qualities. A lot of feminine traits that I own. Right? This is not a bash campaign. This is my opinion as a viewer. You know? We want light. We want cutesy. We want unicorn. We want confetti. We want, you know what I mean? Cotton candy. Femininity. Y'all get what I'm saying. Shit. We don't want, like, like am, I, do, am I making sense? Like, I feel like when I say we need cotton candy and femininity and cutesy and, you know, Barbie... Not talk of trucks and G.I. Joes, bitch. Okay? Because that's what Danny and some of these girls be giving. Ricardo says, bring the femininity. Alright? Now, o Ocean's another one. I didn't mention her. Ocean's another one that can be rough and tough. Again, there's nothing wrong with a woman being assertive, rough and tough, masculine, uh, whatever you want to call it. But this is not the setting when we're on stage performing, right? Um, now, Raven, Danny, and Andrea, they're all sitting together. They're all talking. And Danny says that she feels like a lot of these girls don't respect her gangsta. What gangsta are you referring to, girl? That, see, this is why I can't like Danny. You're delusional these girls can't respect my gangsta. Like, people don't respect you, sweetheart, because you're fraudulent. People don't respect you because you lick the crack of Jocelyn's ass and you run your tongue from the top of her ass crack to her clit. That's why people don't respect you. People don't respect you because you and Andrea team up and bark like hyenas on, on, on girls that y'all don't really care for. It's that simple. Now, has there been times where Andrea has been provoked? Absolutely. She should be able to respond. I'm not referring to those moments. Now, Hennessy comes into the room 
where Danny and Andrea and Raven are sitting. And Raven and the girls immediately start talking about Hennessy. I mean, Rosé. They all start talking shit about uh, Rosé. And Raven's like, you know, what is she going to do with the money at 21 years old? Like, uh, and it's like, Raven, uh, like, because we see Raven talk about this later in the episode, and we'll get more into it. But this whole, what is somebody that's 21 years old going to do with the money? You've got to give this up, sis, because you look ridiculous. You look ridiculous. You look like a hater. And I'm just going to be real with you. Not everybody was 21 years old sucking dick and sleeping on their mama's couch with no ambition, baby girl, and some wet panties and a limp. Okay? Not everybody was 21 years old broke, bow-legged with a wet ass. Stripping. I'm sorry. I mean, if you were stripping, baby, and you didn't have no money, and you would have, like, what? You had no ambition. What was going on? So we're going to hate on Rosé because she's a 21-year-old girl who wants out of the strip club, who wants to invest this money, who wants to go to college, who or you know whatever she says she wants to do. You are giving big-time hater vibes, Raven. And it's mighty funny that once Jocelyn said that Rosé was in her top three, oh, the girls sunk their fucking teeth in, right? Raven's mad that she's not in the top three, and she's been here three fucking years. You've been here three years, ho, and you can't even get in the top three. Now, see, Raven, I was starting to like you. I was starting to like you, and I felt like you were the grown-up, immature one. But now I'm starting to think somebody got in your ear. Did a producer get in your ear, Raven? Did producers get in your ear and tell you that you need to shake it up because you've been a little boring or something? I don't know what it. I don't know what it was. But I was starting to like you. I didn't think you were boring. I think you were being a voice of reason. I thought you were giving house mother vibes. I thought you were giving OG status. But now you're giving Dexter's Laboratory to me again. Now I see. What they're talking about when they call you, what what they call you, Roblox? Not Roblox. Um, They called her something shit. Funko Pop. <laughs> but y'all see why they call you a Funko Pop now, okay? Now that scene with Raven, Danny, and Andrea sitting there talking to Hennessy. When Hennessy walked in and they started talking shit about... um. Rose, I said this scene is going to determine whether or not Hennessy and Rose are real friends, okay? Because no matter what has gone on, if Hennessy and Rose were real friends, Hennessy wouldn't have went in that room and let those girls talk shit about her. And she wouldn't have contributed to the shit talking either. Because here's the thing Hennessy had the nerve to sit there with Danny, with Andrea, with Raven, and say, that Rosé had dragon breath. Yes, bitch, dragon breath. Okay, it's a little, it's a little funny. But she says that, that Rosé had dragon breath and then her breath is 110 degrees. And I'm like, wow. Wow, Hennessy. I was like, I've been rooting for you this whole time too. And all you girls are really showing me that most of y'all ain't about, y'all ain't shit. Most of y'all girls are showing me you're not loyal, you ain't shit. And that you'll do anything for a moment and to stay on this show. Like, wow, sis, we stood by you when you were bullied, Hennessy. And now you're becoming the bully. And how dare you talk about your friend and saying her breath stinks and all this shit when these girls have clowned you about your twat smelling like tilapia the entire time you've been there. You know what it feels like to be put on blast about your stanky pussy. And now you're going to turn around and put this on your friend and say her breath stinks and try to humiliate her and tear her down? Are you are you getting a little jealous thinking that she's going to win because she's in the top three with you? You you let these girls succeed in tearing you guys apart. We have saw from the get-go that these girls have tried to tear Hennessy and Rosé apart because they came in together as friends. The girls did not want them there from the beginning because they thought that they didn't deserve to be there because they didn't audition to be there like the rest of them did. And we've seen them try to get these girls to come apart, and they succeeded in it. They've succeeded in it, and we can't blame it all on the girls because y'all allowed it. You were never true friends to begin with. I'll tell you what it was. These two girls 
were stripper friends okay you know how when like i think i've said this before you know how when you work a job you might have a person or two that you consider your work friend that you're cool with that you might go take a break with every now and then that you might eat lunch with you know what i'm saying but you don't really hang out with outside of work they're not like a true real friend you know what i'm saying that's what i think happened with hennessy and rose uh, that's exactly what I think happened. They, these two were never real, real friends because they, she, Hennessy sold Rose out so fucking quick. And to be honest, Rose is my new favorite. She's the youngest girl here, and she seems the most mature, and she seems the most um real to me. Yeah. Now, Neek brings Ocean to talk to Erica about what happened the night before. So, Neek is trying to orchestrate this meeting so Erica and Ocean can get back on the same page and they can work it out, right? Ocean immediately apologizes to Erica and says that she wasn't coming at her and that she didn't want to fight her. And Erica says, do you think I would be okay with what you did? Erica says, you did the same thing with Lex. You say, you felt bad. You're sorry. And Erica says, you showed me who you are, okay? You showed me who you are, and I, and I don't trust you anymore. And that's the way I feel. And I'm so glad Erica did not give her a second chance. I'm so glad Erica told her, like, uh, no, baby, once a, show, uh, once a snake shows me who they are, I believe them, and you're a fucking snake. That's exactly what Erica told her. Don't trust that barefoot backwoods hoe, okay? Um. Now, the girls are in San Antonio, and it's time to perform. They get on stage. They do their performance. We see during the performance, which their performance was really good, by the way. I agree with Jocelyn when she says this was their best performance ever. I think this is the best um, lineup of girls for the cabaret as far as everybody doing you know dancing being in sync the way they look I think I think this is some of the most prettiest girls we've had on the cabaret aside from oceans um but now the hiccups that happened throughout the show was the girls shoes we noticed that the girls are wearing heels during this performance envy says that they didn't get to rehearse wearing these heels which I thought was less than smart ricardo what's going on boo you're the choreographer why did the girls not rehearse in those heels that they're in because we see what happened the girls heels are starting to come off it happened to hennessy and it happened to envy where their heel literally the shoe literally came off their foot and they're dancing with like the one high heel on one of them hanging off um Andrea did a solo scene during the performance, during one of Jocelyn's slower songs, and Andrea's solo scene was actually really good. I think she did really well. Andrea does best in solo scenes, I feel like. When she's on stage with a group of girls trying to do something in sync, she's always offbeat. She just looks like a sore thumb to me. So um, I thought she did good with the solo scene. Everybody's looks good. Everybody looks coordinated. It was a great performance. Um, now, after the show, the ladies are outside by their trailer. Everybody's outside talking about how the performance was great, you know. Um, and Ricardo tells the ladies that they're going to Cancun tomorrow to perform, which I was like, okay, that's that's different for the cabaret. Um Jocelyn tells the girls how proud of them that she is and how she wants to one day hand the cabaret down to one of the girls because she won't be able to do this forever. And she says that she hopes that she can hand it down to Andrea. And Andrea steps forward so awkwardly and she goes, like, who the, well, first of all, who told you to step forward? Okay, Jocelyn didn't say Andrea step four. She just said that she would like to hand over the cabaret to you, okay? And secondly, that's why you shouldn't, you you don't need that responsibility because how awkwardly you, like, you don't have the confidence to, 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 to carry the cabaret, okay? And thirdly, thirdly, if y'all think for one motherfucking second that Andrea's cabaret 
is going to sell fucking tickets. Jocelyn, you're smoking crack. and You're not snorting coke. You're fucking smoking crack. If you really think that the Zeus subscribers are going to watch Andreas Cabaret and then go buy tickets. So, delusion. Delusions of grandeur. Okay? No, I don't care if Danny and Andrea teamed up and did Danny and Andrea's. Nobody is showing up. I'm convinced they're all smoking crack. I'm convinced at this point. I mean, shit. I'm not saying that they are. I'm not saying that that's alleged. I said I'm convinced that they are. I'm thinking that they are. The way they act in there. Everybody's acting like they own some shit. What the fuck? Now, Jocelyn says she has nine ladies in front of her, but she only has eight spots available for the cabaret, like Tyra Banks used to do. I have nine ladies in front of me, but only eight of you will be moving forward to be America's Next Top Model. I remember when Tyra used to be so dramatic on America's Next Top Model when she would do eliminations. Jocelyn says she has nine ladies in front of her. But only eight will make it moving forward. Now, shit gets cranked up when Jocelyn asks Henny. Jocelyn asks Henny if Rosé deserves to be there. I'm starting to think a lot of this is produced because have y'all noticed when Jocelyn asks a girl their opinion, they choose like the most problematic answer. Like every time they've asked Ocean an opinion, Ocean throws her friends under the bus. Now they're asking Henny her opinion. She's throwing Rosé under the bus, who was once her friend. It almost makes me wonder if the producers are going to Jocelyn and saying, hey, Jocelyn. Ask Henny if she thinks Rosé should go home. And then they go to Henny and they say, Hey, Henny, when Jocelyn asks you who should go home, say Rosé. I, like, I'm just starting to think that. It's just also coincidental in a way because Jocelyn says, she says, Henny, do you think Rosé deserves to be here? And I'm just like, that is so random. Why is she asking that? Unless Jocelyn is producing herself. She could be self-producing and pulling the strings. And she knows that Henny and Rosé are friends. And if she asks this, she could potentially put a wedge in between the friendship. Now, Henny says, when Jocelyn asks her, do you think Rosé should be here? Henny says, Jocelyn, she didn't do it like it's her B-Day. Referring to the performance. She says that Rosé didn't do it like it's her B-Day. And I was like, wow, you really saw, you like, and we haven't seen Rosé sell Henny out one time. And Hennessy, the first chance she got, she has sold this girl under the river two times, two different times. She talked about her breath behind her back. Now you throw her under the bus in front of Jocelyn and everybody. Uh, I, like, it's like, wow, wow, <laughs> wow. Rosé says that she definitely wants to be there. And she says she feels confident about being there. Now, this is when Raven brings up the whole, I don't think you deserve to be here because you're 21 years old. I don't think you deserve the money because you're 21 and you wouldn't make smart investments. Rosé says, really? Because I was going to invest my money into my Roth IRA. And I was also going to go back to school for lip injections. Now, <laughs> Rosé, baby, I was with you and I'm still with you, okay? I'm with you on the Roth IR, you know, I'm with you on putting money into investments and retirement accounts and all that good stuff that you want to do that, you know, whatever you want to do. But when you said you want to go back to school to be a, to do lip injections, I was like, huh, is that a degree? I don't, do they, I don't, I, I know you can be certified to do lip injections, but in order to be certified to do lip injections, you have to be a registered nurse or a physician's assistant I believe it is you can't like I couldn't just go and do a nine-week course tomorrow and get and be able to do lip injections you know what I'm saying and that's the way it came off from for Rose maybe she's a little naive and ignorant to it and she thinks that you can um but like yeah Botox and filler and all that yeah you gotta you gotta have a medical some, some kind of credence to that, right? Now, Raven says she's 30 years old and she wants to go back to school. And I'm like, well, 
why is Rosé's ambitions, wants, and desires any less than what you want? So because you decided to wait till you were 30 to go back to school, you deserve the money even more? No, I think we should give it to the 21-year-old who's trying to go back to school right now, fresh out of high school, fresh out of school, and not give it to somebody who waited 10 years and laid on their back and, you know, smoked weed, laid on their mama's couch, and did the shit that you did, Raven. Because that's what it's given me. It's given that Raven ain't done with, done shit with her life up until now. And she, you know, she wants the money because she's like, look, I, I, I'm, I'm 30 years old and I ain't done shit. I need to figure something out. I mean, and listen, no shade to the sex workers. Like I told y'all, if somebody wanted to offer me money to get in my pants and the dollar amount was enough, I'd do it. I ain't got no shame in my game. Shit. Offer me a few thousand and you can get it. Okay? Yeah, okay? And some of y'all don't even some of y'all might say a few thousands. Damien, you're cheap. Some of you hoes would fuck for fifty dollars. So I don't want to hear it, okay? Yes, a few thousand and I will drop these draws. Um But everybody wasn't selling pussy in their twenties, Raven. So stop hating on 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 I want to call her Erin, because I think that's her real name, is Erin. Um, Rosé, stop hating on Rosé. Because you ain't where you want to be at 31 years old. I just felt like it was so stupid for her to say that she doesn't deserve the money because she's 21. Like, what? Now, Raven then decides to bring up Rosé's hygiene. And she, um, I'm, I'm just sitting here like, like, okay, there's obviously an agenda here. I don't know if Raven is feeling herself because y'all know at the San Antonio performance, the crowd was chant, chanting Raven's name, Raven, Raven. After this episode, baby, in this season, I promise you, Raven, they ain't going to be chanting your name. They're going to be throwing shit at you. They're going to be booing you after this episode because you're coming off like a bully. Rose didn't do anything to you. Let's just be real. You're hating because she's going to beat you in this competition. You're hating and you're jealous that she's going to get the 50K over you. And then when they, Raven brings up Rosé's breath smelling. <laughs> Bitch, I died when Rosé went. <gasps> <laughs> when she started smelling her breath, I died, bitch. And then again, Hennessy, you have the nerve to talk saying, I can't hang out with someone whose breath stinks. She said this in her confessional. What do you mean you can't hang out with someone whose breath stinks, ho? You were hanging out with her in the strip club. You came in, came in, came onto this fucking show saying this was your friend. You were clicked up and allied with her. You laid up with her on the couch. Y'all sitting by one another texting. What do you mean you couldn't be friends with her when her, you can't be friends with her because her breath stinks? You were friends with her all up until these girls tried to get you not to be. Why? What changed? This is why I don't believe it that her breath smells bad because y'all are just trying to make these girls look bad or this girl look bad in particular because she's beautiful. She's the youngest. She's in the top three. And you're mad. Y'all are haters. Y'all are fucking haters. And again, Hennessy, they were just saying that your motherfucking twat smelled like sour milk, ho. So why are you shaming another female, especially one that is your friend? Henny tries speaking up. And, and she, she, she tries to keep going and going. And Rosé says, they've been making stank jokes, jokes about you since you got here. So what are you even talking about? And I'm like, come on now. And I, like that's another thing, Rosé. I needed you to eat these girls up a little bit better than you did. Now, I'm, I'm proud of you that you stood on your ground because we did see Rosé. She went around to every single girl and was clocking it. But I would have really went in on Henny and said, how dare you, bitch? I know so much about you. These bitches were saying your pussy stunk and I stood by you and I didn't say a word. And you're going to throw me under the bus and talk about my breath stinking? And it's like, I can't, I, I, I can't even root for Hennessy anymore. Like, I can't. You're going out sad, babe. You're going out sad. And I promise you, when Hennessy watched this back, she probably felt so 
stupid. When Rose brought up, um, when Rose said, you're talking about me, they've been talking about how you stink since you got here. Talking to Henny, Raven says, oh, I've never smelled her before. Oh, now all of a sudden, we're going to act like we never smelled Hennessy's pussy and we're going to jump on the hate train for Rose. I got it. That's why I said I don't believe anything that these girls say. And to be honest, when y'all go talking about your pussy stinks, your breast stinks, I'm going to start thinking that you're projecting and I'm going to start thinking that your pussy stinks or your breath stinks and you're saying it because you don't want anybody to clock you that's what it is Raven that's what it is for y'all other girls y'all don't want to be clocked for your bad hygiene so you try to put it on someone else now again we see Rose go around the circle and she ends up calling each girl out one by one and letting it know letting them know how she felt about them you know she told some of them you know I fuck with you we've been cool since we've been here yeah blah say blah say blah but one thing I appreciated that Rose said that was so true so true the mic drop moment is when she says I never sat up here and disrespected any of y'all right or wrong they couldn't say anything but right. She has it. Now, granted, we need disrespect. We need drama for the show. But the facts are the facts. Rose never did any of the fuck shit that these other girls did to her. The bullying. Now, what happened to Jocelyn at the end there? Did she go in her trailer and do a bump or what? Because Jocelyn was being so nice and uplifting the girls and telling them what a great performance they did and how she's got her top three chosen. And she went from that. She like flipped a switch. And like my brother and I were even talking about this today because my brother and my sister-in-law, they watched uh, Zeus together as well. And he was like, Jocelyn can be so nice. And then she just flips a switch and she's just like a super bitch. And that's why I think she'll like go into her trailer and allegedly do a bump or something because she comes out and she's doing a coke rant she goes on these coke rants is what i call them um because she starts going on and on about how she can't be friends with certain people and she can't party with certain people and how she can't suck their clits and lick cocaine out of their clit because they talk too much and i'll pee in your mouth ho and i'm like what the fuck you have a daughter jocelyn you sound so trashy and nasty sitting up here talking about licking cocaine out of people's pussies and pissing on like you are just i i have no words because they like i have a love hate thing with jocelyn like i love her and i think she's entertaining and i think her music is funny and interesting but on the flip side you can just be a trashy nasty no good gutter butt sometimes just trashy mouth like i i, I it's just, I, I just i don't know what happened to her there at the end and then they keep talking about the 50K, the 50K. I doubt anybody's going to get 50K. Okay? I highly doubt anybody's going to get money. Like, I feel like they're just holding this money over their heads. And they're saying it to make the show look like it's this competition show where you can win money. And it's like, I, I, yeah, whatever. Now, another thing that Jocelyn said that stunned me that stunned my brother, that stunned my aunt, because my aunt was watching this with me at one point, too. I had my whole family watching the cabaret with me this week, okay? Um, we were all stunned when Jocelyn said, you bitches better act like I'm your motherfucking Don. And then she also said, you bitches are not equal to me. I was just like, this hoe really thinks that she walks on water. This hoe really thinks that she is better than these girls jocelyn you, it's so obvious that you're you are so jealous intimidated and insecure by these young women that you're surrounded with and i don't know if it's because you maybe you think that ballistic is gonna fuck them i'm sure he probably does i'm sure he secretly gets him some pussy when you're not around jocelyn and maybe that's why you treat the girls with the way you do maybe that's why you demean them degrade them talk down to them and i was actually giving you your props jocelyn because you know 
most of this season you've been somewhat nice to them and uplifting, but you really were off your rocker tonight. I don't know if you relapsed and decided to put snow up your nose or what, but the way you talked to those girls was disgusting. And what do you mean you better act like I'm your motherfucking Don? Are you just further proving the allegations that you know you are these girls pimp you are these girls madam because you know after the show is over a lot of these girls do be hanging out with you an awful lot and you be having them in miami on yachts and y'all be like are you taking the girls across state lines and y'all tricking and sucking and fucking and I'm just wondering. I'm not saying you are. I'm just asking the questions we're wanting to know. Because what do you mean you better act like I'm your motherfucking Don? Why do these girls have to act like you are their pimp? Why? I thought you were just their boss and they were performing to get a check. Because here's the thing. Like I said, that cabaret ain't making money like that. $60 a ticket. 300 people in a club. Do the math. What? They might make $15,000 in a night, $20,000, if that. Um, and then I don't know about, you know, beverages, alcohol. That's going to go to the club probably. But then you got to pay 20 people with that money. So they aren't really making money like that, right? The cabaret is not making money like that. Now, it's successful. People are showing up to the clubs, yeah, but... Look how many people have to be paid. Jocelyn, 10 girls, Ricardo, the person that's driving the tour bus, the tour manager. You know, there's a lot of people that have to be paid here, Joss. I just want to know what you mean when you say, act like I'm your motherfucking Don. Now, she keeps going, Jocelyn keeps going, and she points at Neek and Rosé, and she says, you need to leave right now. And I'm just like, where is this coming from? They didn't do anything. You, Jocelyn, you just said Neek and Rosé were in your top three. And now you're wanting to send them home because, what, they breathed the wrong way? Because they looked at you the wrong way? Like, I, I don't understand what's going on with this woman. I really don't. Like, the way she talked to Neek and Rosé was disgusting. Telling them to stop, stop looking at me, bitch. Get the fuck out of my cabaret right now. Like, I was like, oh, my God. Like, wow. Oh, my God. She again, I want to I want to reiterate. She said, "You, you hoes are not equal to me." Jocelyn feels like she's better than these girls. She feels like she's above them. She feels like her shit don't stink, and when you cut her, that it doesn't come out red. Baby girl, what world are you living in, Jocelyn? You are so insecure. And my thing is, why do the why do you hoes take it? You the the cabaret girls, y'all are insecure too because you sit there and you allow it and you take it. And really, uh, uh, Rose was the only one who said like, I I can't dick ride and suck this girl's dick the way these other girls do. And I've noticed that Rose does not kiss ass Jocelyn's ass as bad as these other girls do. I don't think she really kisses Jocelyn's ass at all. But these other girls, a lot of them, they really part the cheeks and kiss her ass. They kiss the ring of Miss Hernandez, okay? And if you think about it, the ones that she told to get out, Nick and Rose, they really are like the prettiest ones there. And that's the gag. Jocelyn does not like pretty younger girls. It intimidates her. She don't want them to take her spot. She don't want her man secretly putting his dick in them. In, in them. Because let's face it. Ballistic has a buffet of pussy at any time that he wants. And let's also face it. Most of these girls, given the chance, would throw them legs back for ballistic. Whether they think he's fine or not. Just for the simple fact it's ballistic and they can get back at Jocelyn. And that ballistic might have a little bit of change on him. I don't know if he does. He might. I don't know. Now, Hen Hennessy responds in her confessional to Jocelyn telling Neek and Rosé to go home. And she says, I truly think that the princess just wants these girls gone. And that's what I'm referring to with these girls kissing Jocelyn's ass. It's like a cult. It's scary. The princess? Really? <laughs> like, oh my god. I, I, I felt bad for Rosé, okay? Because, again, she's the realest one here. And after Jocelyn treated her like that, we see her go into the Sprinter van and break down into tears. 
she breaks down and she's crying and I felt so bad for her because I feel like again Rose is real I feel like she has heart she has passion she has ambition and I feel like she's too good for this show I really feel like she's too good for this show she's got a bright future ahead of her and you know What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Because, baby, that was a lot. For, oh, that was 45 minutes of a lot. I had a lot to say. But we got it out. I want to hear you guys' thoughts and opinions on it all. What did y'all think of Jocelyn's, what I like to call a Coke rant? That rant that she went on there at the end. It was like somebody flipped a light switch. What did y'all think about that? What did you think about Oceans versus Erica? I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on that. Who do you think one that round there how do y'all feel about these accusations against rose and her having bad breath do you feel like the girls are bullying her or are they justified in coming against rose leave me all your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you never miss when i upload a video okay click the thumbs up button and like this video that helps me get into the youtube algorithm and that uh, pretty much means YouTube will promote this video out to thousands of people so more people like yourself can find us, okay? Last but not least, if you want to join the Damien After Dark movement and help us grow and sustain this channel, in the description box below will be some ways that you can donate, okay? I want to say thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your presence. Don't forget to tune in each and every week for the Baddies Midwest After Show, as well as the Jocelyn's Cabaret Texas After Show, only on Damien After Dark. I love you for watching, and we'll see you next time. See you.